Hi everyone, so today I will give you a quick intro to DCDLs. I've chosen Ball Doors repertoire on GitHub and I will show you how to get the DCDLs actually on your system and load them up. So we can go to the DCTL folder and one way is to download the zip so you get all the folders and then you can unzip it on your system and you have the DCTLs ready to go. That's a pretty obvious way but there are some issues you can encounter. For example if you go through the technical transforms and for example we say okay we want the ACES D log D gamut. I'm going for a temp one in this example. And as you can see, if we want to do the same, there's no download button. So what we can do is we can say raw and then we have just the text and we can copy this one and paste it in our text editor, for example. I will show you in a minute how to transform the text into a DCTL. But another way would also be to right mouse click and say save link as and you can save it in your downloads folder and you will have a DCTL as you can see here. So that's one way and the another one is if you go to the text edit and the important part is in your settings that you say plain text. Mine is in German but I think the layout is the same and you have to go for plain text because otherwise the DCTL won't work if you have some text formatting modes activated or stuff like that. So now let's call this one dlog to aces ap 0dctl and let's save it in our LUTs folder and hit save and now let's head to the LUTs folder and as you can see this one is here. Let's hit command I and as you can see it's already a dctl. You can also save it as a .txt and afterwards hit command I and just rename the suffix from .txt to .dctl and you're done. Now in DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, this one isn't showing up in our LUTs folder and a simple refresh doesn't do it for a DCTL. So let's quickly close Resolve and open it back up again. And we are back and as you can see, our DLog to Aces is now showing up. So there are three ways to actually apply DCTL to your footage. I have a drone shot in here that's shot in D-Log and I can double click on this one and as you can see I'm now going from D-Log to ACES AP0. You should only do this with DCTLs that don't have any user input because for example the film density one has user input and as you can see it doesn't do anything because if we have a DCTL with user input we need to go to our OpenFX library and type in DCTL and drag it, drop it onto our node. And for example, we can go to film density and here we have our film density DCTL that has user adjustable input parameters. And as you can see, if we change them, everything is changing. So it's behaving correctly. And the third way is you can go to your media pool and you can right mouse click and say, I want to apply my D-Log to ACES. And we have the same thing as with the double click. This is especially useful because if you have IDDs for all your drone shots, for example, and you have like a documentary with 45 drone shots, for example, you can easily select all of them and apply the IDD. So you don't have to do it with groups or stuff like that. Or actually you can use the groups to go, for example, from ACES AP0 to ACES CCT because we always want to grade in CCT and we can activate our reference gamut compress. And of course we also need our ODT so we go from ACES CCT to REC 709 and that would be a great workflow and you have a correct input transform for your D-Log shots. That's basically it. Last but not least, I would suggest to create a DCTL folder to stay organized, but that's just for the LUTs folder because if you have the DCTL in here, you see you don't have the folders in here. So be aware your DCTL library can get quite messy quite fast. That's it for the DCTL intro. I hope this clarifies for everyone how to get DCTLs from the internet and actually load it up in Resolve.
Thanks for watching and see you soon.